Now, what else are we going to get out of this architectural model? Well, we will see what levels are in this model. Uh, this is a multi-story building. Many buildings we work on are multi-story. Even if they're not multi-story, they will have multiple levels, possibly a foundation level, um, a floor level, a ceiling level, maybe a roof level, a parapet level. So levels are not just the floor. Well, how do we see these levels? We need to go back up to some raw views. Now they have their views listed uh, with headings. And they have a nice uh, heading format here. Um, they have a, a few things. They have views going to sheets, working views, all these kind of things, 3D views. And every architect is going to have a different setup. So we have to kind of get in here and figure it out. Let's uh, assume we're going to look at views to sheets. This is their actual view, production views. We've got all kinds of things. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the 3D view and just get a look at our building. There's our building. See a number of floors, L-shaped building. We want to look at exterior elevations. Here we go. Exterior elevation. There's a number of those. Um, we want to go to an overall of some kind. Here we go. An overall south. Double click that to open up the south elevation. Now, for some reason, if, if you ended up with a blank sheet like this, you can pan around and try to find it. But there's a, a keyboard shortcut. If you just type Z A for zoom all Z A, it will automatically um, zoom to the full view. Okay, here's our south elevation. Now what we can see over here on the right are their levels. They even have one called elevator pit. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. These are looking pretty standard. 7. Now look up here. We have bottom of truss, roof height, penthouse floor, top of parapet, top of penthouse. So there's a lot of views, a lot of, excuse me, a lot of levels in this model. Now, do we need all of those in our model? Most likely no, but it doesn't hurt to have extra levels in our model. Um, we do need levels. What are levels for? Levels, we need levels to create floor plans and ceiling plans. They have to be tied to an actual level within Revit. So we do need all of these levels. But I do this to get an idea of how the architect has set up their levels and which ones they're actually using. Um, this is a fairly straightforward building. There's not any you know, sunken rooms with other levels. Some buildings, I've done some that have three or four down here at level zero because it's on a hill, on a hillside. And so we end up with you know level A, B, C, and D. Luckily, this one is fairly straightforward, but that's one thing you want to learn from looking at the architectural model is how are their levels set up to get an idea of what they're doing. Um, so that gives us an overview of what they have. We'll actually copy these levels into our electrical uh, model uh, back when we get to the electrical model. The other thing I look at here is let's look at a floor plan. Here's floor plan. You can see there's many, many, many floor plans. They've got enlarged floor plans. They've got uh, floor plans for key plans and landscape and finishes. And, and you know, this is like I say, a real life project um, that is more complicated than just simple ones you may see on other videos. So we need to dig into this and figure out what plans are what. Let's see if we can find a simple plan view of a level here. Floor plan level 01. Double click that to open it. ZA if I need to, but it's already zoomed. Now here is their level 01 floor plan. Looks like a standard floor plan. Um, so this is what we want to look at. Now, what is called level 01 floor plan, but was it actually created on the actual level 01? Well, over here on this huge properties box on the right, 
you can dig into here and eventually you'll find what level it was created right here in the middle associated level level zero one okay so that's a simple um simple mapping level one is actually using level one like i said some other projects you may have uh, level one maybe from level b uh, so that can be tricky um, so anyway this is level one so let's take a look at one that might be different is is there a roof plan well there let's look here level four level seven there's a penthouse floor this is kind of like the roof well it's partial roof and the penthouse it is created from associated level over here on the right penthouse floor because we saw things like top of parapet and um, all those other levels uh, but this lets us know that they created their roof or penthouse view from the actual penthouse floor you can always open up this architectural um, model later to review this if you need to as you're creating your electrical model uh, but this just kind of gives you a good overall view up front of how they've arranged things uh, you can see here their grids we're going to copy these eventually into our electrical model one thing i note here is these two grids here g and g.1 are uh, right next to each other but there's an offset feature built into revit that we can use to separate these out we'll show you how to do that another thing of note in this architectural model is these green lines what are these hover over that um, that just tells you that shared levels and grids reference planes it's a reference plane click on that over here on the right if it's a reference plane well what's that well this is kind of a like a construction line it won't get printed but it, it can be used um, maybe um, you know it's part of a curb for the street or something that they need to reference and you'll see these uh, oftentimes in the middle of a project in the middle of a floor plan and they're kind of construction lines and we can add these into our project if we need them um, we'll see that later what else can we get from this um, that's about it for now um, you know back to the back to the sheet one thing I wanted to do back on that on the actual sheets that I forgot to show you sheets is things is, again you could get out of the PDF but you know how are they numbering their sheets this architect uses lowercase and then a decimal system so you know as we produce our electrical plans we want to mimic what they're doing now all of this data like the address and the client these things are contained in this architectural model they're called uh, project information if we go up to the manage button like we did before and over here project information in here you can see the data here issue date project status it's a permit set the client name the address things like that all that kind of stuff we can extract this also and put it into our electrical model we don't have to type it in and copy it in separately so we'll show you how to do that but that's that's also in this model so i think this is about all we need to see in the architectural model um, we extracted the title block so now what we're going to do is save this as a as a non-central model so that we can then link it into our electrical model so file save as it's a project we want to save it in the electric on the xref folder now this was the name that it gave it automatically it took that architect's name and it added detached because we detached it well this is not the name we want to save it we want to save this as a uh, an office standard architectural link name and it's similar to what we did with our electrical model we give it job number dash 
project description. In this case, it's MFIA Revit tutorial. Now this is an architectural model. So you can shorten that with ARCH to distinguish it from a mechanical or a structural or electrical. And then finally, we include the version of Revit that it is created in 2020. Before we save, again, hit options. Look at that. It wants to save 20 backup copies. No, no, we want one. OK, and then save it. So it's doing it save. It's not showing. There we go. Showing us progress. It's saving this now as a link ready raw architectural model that we can then link into our electrical file. Now, just to let you know, you're going to need to go through the procedure of opening and saving an architectural Revit model every time you get a new one. Now, you most likely won't need to extract the title block every time. They don't typically change, but keep that in mind. But you'll simply open it up, uh, detaching it like we did, and then save it as and give it the proper name. And you'll just write over the old um, cleaned up architectural model that's in the ZArt, this, excuse me, that's in the XREF. So that'll be good practice to open that up, um, open it up detached, and then save it as the standardized name. This is about done saving. This is a large model. It's uh, over 700 uh, megabytes. It's a good size model, good size project. Okay, now we're done with the architectural model and we can close it out. We've saved it with the proper name file we can go close it will just close just the architectural model that we are in right now close that 